Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. Today I'm back in my home office and we're going to look at editing a JPEG photo in Nikon Studio NX. Now, I've already done quite a few videos here and for the playlist check it out up here. Now the videos that I've already done on editing in Studio NX have been editing raw files. Today I want to show you the limitations of editing a JPEG photo in Studio NX. You can edit JPEG photos and not just JPEG photos from let's say a Nikon D500 which is my camera. I also have a Sony ZV-1 and I shoot in JPEG and RAW on that camera and I found that I can also edit the JPEG images taken from the Sony in this program. But there is a very big difference between editing a RAW file in NX Studio compared to editing a JPEG file in NX Studio. Let's now take a look at the limitations of editing a JPEG photo in NX Studio. So here are a couple of photos that we're just going to touch on today. This one here with the lizard, I just put it here to show that this is a JPEG photo taken with the Sony ZV-1. As you can see here in the right panel here, it says camera info device ZV-1. I'm just going to take it out of there because I don't really want it. We have two photos here. We have the JPEG and the RAW. Now these were taken a couple of days ago for sunrise at Nudgee Beach and by the time you see this video on my channel there will already be a video tutorial on photographing a sunrise with filters especially for beginner photographers and if you want to check that video here I'll put a link up there now. Definitely worth watching even if you're not just a beginner photographer but you want some tips on using filters be they polarizer, ND grads or ND filters at sunrise. Well worth the watch. Now part of the reason why I'm doing this video is that I also want to show people why it is so important to use the correct white balance especially if you're shooting in JPEG. If we shoot in RAW then you can go home and adjust the color balance, the white balance in your editing process but if you shot a JPEG image you are very limited what you can do with the white balance with the type of colors that you see and this is why I'm doing this video today to show you the limitations not just of NX Studio but the limitations of shooting in JPEG and not having the correct white balance set. The first two images here are a JPEG and a RAW file and the white balance was set to daylight. The second one here I'd selected shade and you can see that it's much warmer and it, it really sort of has a very warmish tone but if you'd shot this in JPEG like I just did and you came home and you said like well it's too warm I want to cool it down then you are very limited in what you can do especially if we're using software like NX Studio. We'll just select this image here. So this is the JPEG image you can see it's very nice there was a beautiful morning that morning. This was after sunrise. I was just about to go home but the reflections here because there was hardly any breeze. It was just beautiful and I just couldn't pass up this opportunity. Now this is the raw file and if we look here on our right pane you can see picture controls. It's not grayed out. We can see camera compatible. We can change the picture control. We can change the white balance. You can see here it's showing it's quite warm. I can cool it down. To wherever I want. Same with exposure compensation. I can darken it, I can increase it and you notice here beside these exposure compensation it shows raw. White balance shows raw. Picture control shows raw. I'll untick these to bring it back down to the same. Now watch what happens when we go to the JPEG image. So this is the JPEG image here and notice picture control is grayed out white balance is grayed out, exposure compensation is grayed out. Why? Because it is a done deal and this is what I tell people when we shoot in JPEG we basically got a finished product. You should be setting up all your parameters, the picture control, the white balance in your camera because a JPEG to me anyway is a finished product. I might want to increase the exposure a little bit when I get home but basically a JPEG is it. 
I can just share that on social media and I should be happy with what I see on the screen. Modern cameras, there is, you can adjust it so finely that if you're shooting in JPEG, you shouldn't be worried about coming home and editing your image. You should just be very happy with what you see on your screen and if needs be, then just cropping the image down. But even that, you can actually set it up in your camera, the size of the image you want. So if you're just taking photos to share on social media and all that, and you don't want to print them, then don't save in a wide format. Like in large, you can save it to a very small JPEG image. When I go out with my Nikon D500, I shoot JPEG and RAW. RAW because I want to edit the images at home. And the JPEG is only used if I want to share that image on social media and it's set to normal and it gives me a file size of around two and a half megabytes perfect to share to Facebook to any other place that I want to share on social media or send it to an email to a friend. Here's our image. We quite like the image here but as we can see it's quite warm but what can I do with the image? I can't change the exposure compensation, I can't change the white balance so why am I able to adjust? Well, this is what you're able to adjust. You're able to adjust the brightness, the contrast, the saturation. So if it's too saturated, I can just reduce the saturation. But this is not going to take away the warmth that is in this image, the warmth that is in these clouds. I can increase the highlight protection to even it out. I can increase the shadow protection, which means I'm increasing the exposure in the shadows. I can do that. Now I can also increase the delighting. I can do that but I'm stuck on the colors. I cannot adjust my colors. I can do a lot but I cannot adjust the colors. The best that I can do for this image here is decrease the saturation a little bit so that it looks a little bit more realistic. You might like an image like that. You might say well I actually like very warm clouds. Well then you choose the white balance setting that you prefer to shoot in because our cameras gives us quite a few different white balance settings to use. We have incandescent or tungsten which will result in a very bluish image. Then we have auto white balance. Then we have daylight or sunny, fluoro, cloudy, shade and also flash. One of the few times that I use auto white balance is when I'm shooting wildlife because the light can change from being very saturated to being quite dull so I prefer just to shoot in auto white balance. If your camera is set to auto white balance and you're not happy with the colors that you see then change it to one of your presets to sunny, to cloudy, to shade. It just depends what you want in your image. So we could also adjust our levels and curves by grabbing just the middle here I can just increase the, the exposure of the image a little bit but remember we're dealing a JPEG so you've got to be very careful that too much adjusting and you can really sort of stuff up your image. Next we can go into the lighting we can increase the color saturation we can boost the colors. Now here it gives us an option people or nature. This is a landscape image so we can choose landscape and this is about all that we can do in this image. If our horizon was crooked here we can still do that. I can still come up here and go straighten the horizon, click from here all the way across, didn't do it right, do it again. You can see we can still use these tools but the major tools, the most important tools that NX Studio has to offer us are blocked out, they're grayed out because they can only be used in a raw image. The only other thing I can do here if I want to is to crop the image. So I can just come up to the top corner here and select where I want the image to be. I say like I don't want too much foreground I can come up here uh, that's it enter that's it and that's all I could do in this image. I would have to accept these colors. If you found value in this video give me a thumbs up I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay safe, enjoy your photography and I'll see you next time.